Hello guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about financial goals. So I really kind of wanna take the time and just talk about, you know, financial goals, why setting them might be important, and also some practical things that you can think about as well if you are thinking about setting any money goals for 2022. So as you can see, I've got my tea here. It's gonna be a bit of a casual video, mainly because I'm not feeling too well today, but I still wanted to get a video out. So I'm just gonna have like more of a chill conversation and I also wanted to let you guys know that the last week of December I won't actually be having any videos out just because I want to take a little bit of a break and because I've got some exciting stuff coming in January so I really want to gear up for that so looking forward to all of that but without further ado let's get started on talking about our financial goals so in terms of actually setting financial goals and actually talking about our money goals I think a lot of people don't realize why it's actually important in the first place and so for me personally the reason why I actually set these financial goals is because I don't want to be like budgeting or saving or investing my money just for the sake of it. So I don't want to be saving money just because I need to save money. I want to actually work towards something because I'm more likely to keep motivated if I actually know what I'm working towards. And so the reason why you might decide to now start actually thinking about setting financial goals is because a lot of people do have dreams, but they never really have the plans to back it up. And if you don't really have the plans to back it up, then you're less likely to actually start working towards. It. And so yes, we might have dreams to start off with in terms of what we might want financially in this case. But what I also want you guys to think about is what does that mean when it actually comes to setting clear goals? And do you actually know your numbers as well? Because again, a common mistake that I see is people have like these goals. Let's say, for example, you want to buy a house. You literally just say that I want to buy a house and then that's it. You don't actually have numbers to back it up. So you don't actually understand how much you should be putting aside in order for you to reach that goal. And you don't even know if you're going to be able to reach that goal practically or not because you haven't actually backed it up with numbers and so now we understand you know why actually setting financial goals might be important to you let's actually start talking about the process behind setting your financial goals and if you're liking this video so far then feel free to give me a thumbs up as it really does help to support the channel plus it's free and so here's the process that I tend to use when it comes to actually setting financial goals because I don't actually just set financial goals for the year there is a specific process where I actually work backwards and this is something that I also share with my clients in my coaching program as well and so for for me the first thing I actually start thinking about is what is my vision so what do I actually want to achieve in the long term before I even start thinking about things that I want to be achieving in the next year and so when I'm talking about things that are in the long term I'm really thinking about things that are maybe like 10 plus years away and so I really want to be thinking about what kind of life do I actually want to have and what does that mean in numbers and so for example when it comes to myself and most of my clients one of our long-term goals is probably going to be things like financial independence and you might also be thinking about retirement as well and so you don't want to just be thinking okay I want to be financially independent you really don't want to be thinking about that what you want to be thinking about is actually what does financial independence mean for me and what does that mean in numbers so how much am I going to need in order for me to become financially independent and then you also want to be thinking about things like okay when do you actually want to achieve that goal and how much does that mean you need to be putting aside each year for you to actually achieve that goal and then you obviously can break it down to say okay Okay, what does that mean I now need to be putting aside every single month in order for me to actually start working towards that goal as well and so as an example in my case I wanted to become financially independent by the age of 35 that has probably slightly changed now I feel like I kind of want to reach it earlier but when I initially had the goal of 35 I needed to understand how much I actually needed to become financially independent and so for example in our case when it came to actually becoming financially independent we had a goal of having expenses of around two thousand pounds or dollars a month to cover us and so if we were able to generate passive income that actually reaches that two thousand pounds or dollars then essentially what it means is that we are financially independent and so we were then working backwards to say okay how much do we now need to be setting aside in order for us to actually reach that financial independence goal and so once you've actually started to think about you know your vision and your long-term goals that's when you now want to start working backwards so for me when I'm working with my clients for example we really start thinking about okay what are your long-term goals what are your your midterm goals so these are going to be things like maybe within the next three to ten years and then also what are your short-term goals as well and then again really being crystal clear on your numbers even though they may change you can always adapt them but actually having a number to something is going to be easier for you to understand whether you can actually practically start working towards that or not and so for example with some of the women I work with a big goal is for them to actually be able to buy a house so that's likely to be maybe one of their midterm goals and so what we will then think about is okay when it comes to actually saving 
saving up for your house how much are you going to need to save up for in total and then what does that mean in terms of actually putting money aside every single year and then you can now start to break that into every single month and so that's going to help you when it comes to actually figuring out your yearly goals let's say 2022 because you already have your midterm and your long-term goals in sight you already have a better idea as to how much you should be putting aside every single month in order for you to work towards some of those longer term goals now if you do feel like when it comes to your financial goals you maybe struggle with actually being clear on that and even understanding what that means in numbers for you then definitely check out my one-to-one -one coaching program because that is exactly what I do when it comes to helping my clients we really clarify your goals and understand what that means in numbers and how practical it is for you to actually reach those goals so you can understand exactly how much you should be saving or investing in order for you to reach those goals in the time frame that you actually want so if you do feel like you may need further support with that then of course you can book a free sales call with me and we can see if the program is right for you but ideally once you're actually clear on some of those long-term goals plus your mid-term goals and maybe your short-term goals as well it's going to be easier for you to understand exactly how much you might need to be putting aside in order for you to reach those goals and so you're more likely to actually keep motivated and keep being consistent as well because you're so clear on your numbers and you know exactly what you need to be doing in order for you to actually reach your financial goals so that's really the process that I go through when it actually comes to setting my financial goals but what I want to do now is kind of talk about some maybe ideas that you want to think about when it comes to actually our own personal finances so that you can kind of take that away and really make some crystal clear goals for you in 2022 so one of the things that you may want to start focusing on when it comes to your financial goals is actually paying off debt if you have any now personally I'm probably going to be talking more so about high interest debt or consumer debt so things like credit card debt maybe you've got a car loan maybe you've got personal loans that might be something that you also want to focus on next year now when it comes to actually paying off debt I actually have a couple of videos where I actually talk about how you can actually start paying off your debt relatively quickly but what I would say is just be quite crystal clear in terms of how much debt you currently have and how much you actually want to pay off this year because for a lot of people you may not be able to actually pay off the full debt this year and that's okay as long as you actually have a plan as to how much you're actually going to be putting towards paying off your debt then that's really going to help you start making progress towards it so really the one tip I would have when it comes to actually paying off your debt actually being clear on the numbers in terms of how much you actually want to be setting aside but then as well as that a bonus tip I would give you is actually think about why you want to pay off your debt because a lot of people don't actually do this and so you're less likely to be motivated if you don't understand why you're paying off your debt in the first place and so really taking the time to understand your why is definitely going to be helpful in the long run and then another financial goal you may want to think about is actually when it comes to saving money so these are going to be things that you may want to start saving for and there's going to be a whole load of different things that you may want to save for obviously everyone's going to have different goals but one thing could be like an emergency fund especially if you currently do not have an emergency fund that's probably going to be a priority for some of you and again I do have a video that talks about emergency funds in a bit more detail so of course I'll link that up here for you and in the description below but there are also other things that you may want to consider saving for so for example you might be saving up for a car maybe you're actually saving up for a wedding or maybe you're actually even still saving up for a house and so you might not even be buying your house this year but what you want to be thinking about is how much are you going to be allocating towards that goal so that you are actually one step closer to actually reaching that goal within the time frame that you decided and so again when it comes to any of your savings goals you really want to be clear on the numbers and you really want to be clear in terms of what you are going to be prioritizing this year but make sure you also back it up with numbers so you understand how much you should be saving every single week or every single month and again another bonus tip is actually understand what you're saving for and why you're doing it in the first place because as I've mentioned a lot of us are just saving for the sake of saving and that's really not going to help when it comes to actually being motivated and so another financial goal you may want to also focus on in 2022 is investing and I'm not specifically just talking about investing in the stock market it could also be investing in yourself as well because I think that's something that a lot of us don't really tend to do so whether that's actually buying books maybe it's buying courses or programs if you really take the time to start thinking about how you can actually start investing in yourself you would be surprised at the level of return you could end up getting for years to come so for example in my case whenever I had income yes I was also putting money into my savings and I was investing in the stock market but I also had some money towards actually investing in myself so whether they actually be investing in books or educational magazines I also used to go to networking events obviously pre the pandemic and then this year I really focused on actually hiring a coach and also joining courses and memberships as well so really start thinking about how you can actually maybe invest in yourself even if it's a very small percentage but knowing that you're actually 
paying yourself first by actually focusing on yourself could do absolute wonders for you and then of course you might want to also be thinking about other investments like the stock market like real estate whatever it is again just making sure that you have clear numbers to that and also thinking about how much you want to be investing consistently throughout the year so if you did like this video then please do give me a thumbs up if you haven't already and let me know in the comments what are some of your financial goals for 2022 i do post every tuesday and friday so if you would like to know more then of course you can subscribe to my channel but of course i will still see you guys on tuesday